Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from a German whiskey producer called Ellsburn. And they have now for the eighth time released their Cozy Winter 8th edition special 2022 release. So this is batch number L, um, actually the German word for batch, Lot, and then 2121. And um, this is 52.3. Now, what really amazed me is the following. This label is not identical to that label. Many, many, many manufacturers of whiskey um, that use a box like this put exactly the same label on both of these. Just print the label twice. Boom. You got it. So they were created a label for this and they created a label for this, which I thought was kind of unique. Now, this is whiskey base number 222. Two, two, two six one so quadruple two and then six one we're at 52.3 percent abv 1430 bottles for the german market now what am i going to compare it to Ta -da! so i hope that i actually do what i plan to do is basically now i've always done an english video to all of my videos that i did in german and for the last <clears throat> five years, I've always done a um, top 10 list, my top 10 um, single malts, my top 10 Irish whiskey, my top 10 American whiskey, my usually my top five or eight or whatever world whiskeys. And so um, this made it, this is version number seven, edition seven, released 2021, onto my top five world whiskeys that I tried in 2022. Now, the criteria to be on the list was to actually have been reviewed in that year. So this is now a review of um, 20, 2023. So this could be a contender for 2023. We'll find out in a second. All right. So this was 79 euros. For some reason, this is 75 euros. It went down in price. Does that ever happen? Apparently, yes. I'm still flabbergasted all right so the next thing that really threw me for a loop was the cask combination um Ellsburn, anna buchholz she the master distiller there she uses a lot of uh, she uses exclusively first fill casks so she had first fill malaga first fill mazala first fill port and first fill sherry in this one. Over here, she used, and this, by the way, if you want to look, is whiskey base number 196984, first fill Malaga, first fill Dolce Mazala, sweet Mazala, and first fill Port Cask. So this is L, Lot, Charge, um, 2060. So since then, so we have here 2121. 21. So she's actually added, she's done. 81 different bottlings since this has been out there, which is a lot, to be honest. All right, but this is a lot of small batch stuff. So 1,344 bottles. Here, as I mentioned, we had 1,430 bottles. Now, this is about two things. First of all, it's about batch variation. Luckily, many, many small distilleries embrace batch variation and they actually show it on the label okay this is 2021 this is 2022 this is the seventh edition this is the eighth edition so we know what we're getting that is going to be this year is going to probably different be different from last year i'm not talking about a flavor drift i'm talking about they're using different casks they put sherry in here and there was no sherry in here that's a different product now it has the same label it has the same name but yet the variations can be very very different think blood oath all right so blood oath bourbon uh, they've used so many different finishings and blood oath one two three four five i don't know 59 whatever that is at the moment um and that's what's happening here all right so i i was originally hoping to have something very very identical to this because i thought this was fabulous and it still is <laughs> So I opened it up, I tried it, it was fabulous. I've done now bottle shares, this much is left. I tried it again, it was still fabulous. I like edition number seven. I like the 2021 version a lot. 
But it's not about that. Oh, by the way, it's a little bit darker even, that 2021 version compared to the 2022 version. So the sherry somehow lightened it up. Who would have guessed? All right, so all natural color, all non-chilled filtered, all cast strength in this case. I don't know. I don't see the word cast strength anywhere here, by the way. It does say non-chilled filtered and all natural color. All right, so if I smell this, I go, uh-oh. And I was like, is my nose broken today? I went over here. <sighs> nope, not broken. I get sulfur. Now, I've been told recently this is sulfur oxide, which is called a sulfate. Same thing used with wine. The same thing used to actually preserve dry fruit like apricots and so on. Even over here in Europe, it's considered sulfates E220. Just like our um, artificial coloring for our um, whiskey has also a E number, um, sulfates, sulfur oxide does too. E doesn't mean it has to be a chemical, it just means it's actually added to the product. Now this is gonna be very interesting. I would love to do some type of, comp um, some type of um, spectral analysis of this and actually see how much sulfur is in a highly sulfured whiskey compared to whiskey with zero sulfur, bourbon. All right, so the master distillers do their utmost to keep sulfur out of the whiskey. Um, copper, can, copper. now we use copper because not because it's malleable, not because it actually can, conducts heat very well, because it combines with the sulfur. Um, barley grains have natural sulfur components in there. We want them out of there, and therefore we use a lot of copper. And then what do we go and do? We take a wine cask, it could be a sherry, a port, a mazala, a Bordeaux, a um, Amorona, a uh, Malaga cask, and then we uh, put a sulfur candle in it, put the lid on top, put the bung, close the bung hole up, send it all over to Scotland, and use that cask and impart all that sulfur. I am not a big fan of the guy who wrote a whiskey Bible with the last name Murray, but I do remember, I was reading up this last week about the sulfites and about sulfur and whiskey and so on. About 10, maybe even 12 years ago, he started a campaign, which I even today can fully get behind and say, he's right about that point. And the following is sulfur is, does not belong in a whiskey. He actually said the biggest mistake the whiskey is industry made in the last decades is using sulfured casks. Because, and that's something I did not know, you use them the first time, you add sulfur to the distillate. You reuse those casks a second time, which happens in the whiskey industry, you're adding sulfur, sulfate up into the whiskey. Use them a third time, it's still gonna impart that sulfur, sulfate moment. And even the fourth time, it could happen. And it's just like, oh, burn those casks, get rid of them. Now over here in Germany, weirdly enough, most, many, many people, I think even the majority of people are sulfur insensitive. The people in America seem to be more sulfur sensitive. And so um, I am fairly sensitive to sulfur. And I did also for my tops of my 2022, and I also wrote down for myself, listed all the flops. And about four out of five, almost 80% of all the flops had one single common denominator. They had sulfur in them. That was enough to ruin the whiskey for me and more times than not. And that's what happened here. So long introduction. <laughs> I got sulfur. So let's try it. Mm -hmm. I think I've described this a dozen plus times. Imagine you're listening to a nice, your music. It could be any type of music you love. And then outside, outside your window, behind and in front of your house and beside your house, all the car, the car alarms go off. And you can't enjoy your music anymore. For me, sulfur is like a car alarm. It totally distracts from everything else going on there. From the beginning almost until the end. The sulfur does dissipate after a long, long time. It's still there. And I can get a little bit of a hint of what this whiskey could be for other people. 
Now, this is very interesting because it's wood smoked. Um, they actually wood smoked their barley themselves up there in the Hartz Mountains of Germany. But I can't get it. And that's such a shame. So, if I go back over here to the 2021 edition, the 7th. <laughs> if I were to create a whiskey at that distillery, and I was allowed to mix and match from all the different, all the different barrels, and I've been there, I've visited them, I've seen the warehouse, I've seen the barrels there. I've seen them make whiskey. Um, I don't think I can make a better whiskey myself. This is the thickness, the, 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 the creaminess, the intensity of those flavors. This is something that I want to sit beside a cozy fire in winter and enjoy this whiskey. Have some time with it, dissect it, and enjoy it. Just absolutely fantastic. And then to actually go back to the beginning, full circle now, batch variations. I bought this bottle expecting to have a slight variation to this bottle. It's not slight, it's major. And it's not just due to the sulfur of 81 cask, maybe more casks. Don't forget, 1,430 um, bottles. So a sherry butt, 500. Ugh. 650 bottles you could possibly get out of there at cast strength after no age statement five six three eight years so i don't even think they put the entire cup the entire um contents of those four casts the malaga the mazala the port and the sherry into this maybe they did i don't know if at the 1300 um, and 44 bottles, they put the entire Malaga, Dolce, Mazala, and the port. So, eh, maybe. They're both 250, 250, and 250 probably. It's probably not port pipe. It's probably hogshead. So, that's 750. Meh. <laughs> Could work out. All right. So, um, that's that. Now, my question of the day is twofold, of course. The first question is, what whiskeys of which distilleries that are fairly small, Elsburn's not a big distillery, they're making, I think, 88,000 liters a year. It's not a lot, enough to, not enough to actually serve the world with. The owner basically said, Jason, I don't want to expand. I don't want to be an international brand. I want to be a local German brand, and I'm happy with that. All right, they're in a very touristic region. There's a lot of people that come there every year for their vacation. They take home a bottle or two or three or four, and they say, hey, that's the entire supply for the whole year. I'll be back next year. Thank you very much. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And the person who is the owner does not have to worry about multi-million dollar deals and things going wrong and all that. She says, I want to create local employment. She grew up there. This is her family business she took over from dad. I just want to be there and do my job correctly and not have to worry about sending alcohol across borders and becoming a national name and someone trying to buy me out and all this. Just enjoy the life and do the thing they want to do. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Congratulations for that wise decision. Um, so what other smaller distillery do you know where the batch variations are? A little bit out there. And the second question is um, very easy. Have you ever tasted sulfur sulfite in your whiskey? Are you sensitive to sulfur? Is it something you can have? Think burnt matches. Don't think rotten eggs, think burnt matches. All right? So this is Whiskey Jason over here. I gave this in my German video a C minus minus for taste, a D plus for value for money. I might have been a little bit nice because I do know the owner and um, this B plus value for money C. I'm going to have to go buy another one of these because that disappointed me. That's the way things are. Thank you very much for liking, sharing, subscribing, telling others, and put that thumb up there. And all the best for you, Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.